Hey, Ted, you mean you got some kind of a lead on him? No, I'm afraid not. Oh. But I just got hold of some information on Rocky Harris. Yeah? That, well, I, I told you after his probation was over, he disappeared. Yeah, yeah, you told me. But now, in view of this new information, plus the fact that you probably know him and his habits better than anyone else, and since Rocky is the only one who knows what he did with those diamonds... Yes. Oh, hold everything, Ted. I'm on my way down to see you. Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Eastern Liability and Trust Company, New York City office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the man who waits matter. Sure, I and I alone could take the credit for Rocky Harrison's trip to Sing Sing over seven years ago. But the fact I'd not been able to recover the only diamonds really stuck in my craw. So what if I was still fairly new in the business at the time? There was no excuse. Okay, then, expense account item one, three ninety five, a taxi to the station and train fare to New York. I walked over from Grand Central to Ted Besom's office at 500 Fifth Avenue. You know, I thought the mention of Rocky Harrison would bring you here in a hurry. Sit down, Johnny. Yeah, sure, thanks. Do you have a little drink? No, thanks. Cigarette? No, just tell me what you know about Rocky and why you think I might be able to get on the track of those jewels again. Well, during his trial... Rocky played it smart. He knew you'd pinned a robbery on him, so in order to draw a light sentence, he admitted everything. Except what he did with those diamonds. Well, apparently he and his lawyer managed to convince the jury... Oh, that cock and bull story about his having had them stolen from him, that's a lot of hogwash. Well, you know it, and I know it. Yeah, Rocky was far too smart for anything like that, and too dangerous. And if that servant there in the only household who caught him blasting that wolf... If that servant fell down the staircase accidentally, I'll eat my shirt. Rocky killed him, Ted. I'm sure of it. Same as he tried to kill me. The fact remains he wasn't held for murder. The jury believed his tale about losing the diamonds, and he got away with a short term. All right, now, let's... During his two years probation, he behaved like an angel. He got himself a job, worked hard, lived modestly, saved his money... And he was a big disappointment to the police who hoped he might lead him to the stone. But, of course, he didn't, right? And I'm afraid by now even the cops believe his story about what happened to him. Yeah, well, I don't. Uh, anyhow, probation over. He dropped out of sight. Yeah, so you said over the phone. The cops apparently figured he'd moved somewhere else and breathed a sigh of relief. But you figured otherwise, Ted? I guess I think the same way you do, Johnny. Probably because of my work in narcotics before I got into the insurance business. Yeah. Well. And sometimes we'd hunt for years all over the country for some character, only to find he was right underfoot all the time. Couldn't see him for falling over him, as the saying goes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, anyhow, I figured that instead of making himself conspicuous in some small town, the best place for a man like that to get lost, the best place in the world, would be the biggest place in the world. Right here in New York. I can't argue with you. So? So when I got wind that Rocky disappeared, well, you know as well as I do, Johnny, that most of these cases aren't solved by any Sherlock Holmes kind of scientific deduction. No, hardly. No, sir, they're solved on information. One good stool pigeon is worth all the clues in the world, right? Well... So when I found out he disappeared, I got in touch with one of my... Paid informants from the old days. An old character by the name of Soder. Soder. Mm -hmm. Soder. Don't think I ever heard of him. You know, whiskey Soder, they call him. I told him I'd pay him well if he'd locate Rocky Harrison for me. You've heard from Soder? He called me this morning. Told me that he's seen Rocky here in town, just as I thought he would. Where? Well, he wouldn't say over the phone, so I told him I'd send you down to see him. Uh, here, Johnny, I'll... Scribble it to dress that way. Yeah, do that. G 
cheap rooming house down near the Brooklyn Bridge. There you are. Good, good. Okay, Cal, go see him. Uh, just a minute, Johnny. Yeah? Soda made one thing clear. I don't know just how or why. I guess the why is obvious enough. But... Yeah? But apparently, Rocky has somehow changed his appearance so much that even his own mother wouldn't know him. But Soda recognized him? Yeah. And uh, one other thing, Johnny. Yeah, what's that? I'm sure you know Rocky well enough to be careful. Sure. Yeah. Watch your step. All right, so what if there was a little risk involved? Here was my chance to make up for having done only half a job some seven years ago. Also, I figured I knew enough about Rocky to be well prepared for almost anything he might try. The main thing was to find out what he'd done with the only diamond. And, of course, get my hands on it. Expense account item two, a dollar seventy for a cab to Whiskey Soda's address. That was the kind of place I'm sure the city planning commission will be glad to tear down. The word manager was scrawled across the door in the hallway marked with the number one. And uh, as for the manager... Yeah, what do you want? My rooms are all filled up. I... Well, now, what's a gent like you doing around here? I'm looking for a man named Soder. Huh? That whiskey's smelling old. You'll find him down the hall in number... Say, he's getting real popular today. Well, now, what do you mean by that? You're the second gent has been here to see him. Oh? Who was the first? Well, I didn't get a good look at him, but I heard him go on back towards the... Which is Soder's room? What's the number? Number seven down the hall. Okay, Didn't see the man leave, though. Maybe he's still in there with... Now, who left that window open there at the end of the hall? All right, number seven. Maybe I better close it. Hey, you sure that Soder didn't leave? Sure, I'm sure. Well, then, come on. Let me have your key. Come on, come on. Peter's room. Now, just a minute. Okay, Mr. don't bother. <laughs> well, I have just a minute, you. Who do you think you are busting down this bus? No. Oh. Yeah. He. He's dead. Yeah. Somebody shot him. Right through the side of the head. <laughs> Smoking more now, but enjoying it less. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. So good. Have a camel cigarette. So rich. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel. So mild. Have a camel cigarette. And here's the reason why. And change to Camels, the best tasting cigarette of all. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, on The Man Who Waits Matter. Scratch through the side of his head, right in front of his left ear. That's right. But I didn't hear any shots. I've been up front in my room all afternoon. Because whoever did it used this pillow to muffle us. One of my best pillars, too. Look here. Look what it's done to it. The man who was here before, what did he look like? Huh? Well, I only looked out of my room in time to see him coming in here. I didn't get a look at his face. You said he was a gentleman, a gent. Yeah, but I didn't really... I think he had gray hair. What about his height and build? Well, now, I don't know. I was up front. Now, how old was he? Look, I told you, mister, okay, I don't okay, know. Okay, okay, here. There's a five spot for your trouble. And for calling the police. Sergeant Randy Singer at the 18th. Police? And my name is Johnny Dollar. Dollar? That's right. The one that's on the radio? You call the police. Tell them I'll contact them later. 
Rocky Harrison had changed his appearance once before, seven years ago. He'd never known how I'd got on his trail. The only one who did was Randy Singer at the 18th Precinct. But I'd found him by using the same corny trick that he had used. Maybe, maybe that trick might work again. If he'd returned to his old haunt. All right, then, item three, a bucket of quarters at the nearest drugstore for some goop to plaster down my hair. Item four, a dollar for some black hair dye. Item five, 78 cents for a jug of peroxide. Getting rid of the tan I usually have took time was a lot of work, but it gave me a few days to raise a small mustache. I dyed that black also. Item six, 20 bucks for some clothing, including a couple of aprons. In some of these joints, you have to furnish your own. Then, item seven, $31 for a pair of thick glasses that I could see through all right, but that gave me a headache. But it was a waste of time that got me down. Working there four solid nights, hoping nobody gets suspicious of me. Working where and why? And the reason for the silly getup? Well, you figure it out. Okay. There you are, Willie. One old fashioned, one double Gibson. Sure, thanks, Joey. And there's the ticket on. The what? Yeah, right there, right, right in front of you. Oh, sure. Now, what's the matter with you? Can't you see? Why don't you get them glasses changed? Oh, they're okay, Joey. Oh, yeah, sure they are. Ain't you gonna take a drink to the table? Huh? Oh, that's right. Well, I've been tending bar here at the Purple Hat since the place opened up. But you are the punchiest waiter I ever seen. Now, that's a fact. Uh, uh, here you are, gents. An old-fashioned and a double gift. Well, you took long enough to get them. I'm sorry, mister. The other way around, the double Gibson's mine. Oh, yes, sir. Well, here's the prosperity, Barney. Yeah. So, would you just like to order you send them now? No, later. Yes, sir. I'll wait, then. Yeah, you do that. All right, now, Rocky. Uh, waiter. Yes, sir. Uh, go get yourself a drink. It's on me. Well, John, I'm afraid the management would exactly okay, like Okay, okay. Then just for moose, we'll call you when we want another one. Yes, sir. Now, Rocky. Barney, you fool. Don't you ever call me that again. Call me Chilton. Sorry. Slip it the top. Rocky. Rocky Harrison. Oh, it was luck. Dumb luck. He'd been in there alone three nights running. But believe me, I hadn't recognized him, wouldn't have recognized him now if his pal there at the table hadn't slipped up and called him by name. Since probation, he disappeared for only one reason, to change his appearance completely. He'd grown a beard, a full head of hair, and he bleached it almost white. He'd put on 20 or 25 pounds, had his buck teeth fixed, and it made a big difference. What's more, of course, I hadn't seen him since he'd been sent up the river. As for his pal, Rocky had called him Barney. Sure. Bernard Little, one of the cleverest big-time fences the NYPD had ever known about, on whom they'd been able to pin absolutely nothing. Sure, it was unnatural. Rocky had the jewels stashed away somewhere. Barney knew it and was willing to recut them and fence them out for him. Maybe if I was real lucky, I could nail them both. During their meal, I, I stayed close to them as much as possible, but it got me nowhere. Whenever I was in hearing, their conversation was meaningless. That's right, Barney. Just tell them that Edward Tilton said it. Uh, of course, Mr. Tilton. Be glad to use your name. Well, I'm certain they'll do all right by you. Everything yeah, you what's want. more, they were both trying to make it oh so plain that Rocky's name was Edward Tilton. And I wondered, had Rocky by any chance seen through this corny disguise of mine? But apparently not. Okay, wait a minute. Hey, uh... The... Oh, Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll have you changed in a minute. It's all right, boy. You can keep the change. Uh, thanks very much, sir. Well, shall we get up? Uh, shall we leave, Mr. Stilton? Now I'm already. Oh, uh, I'd like to look up the owner and compliment him on his chef. Why not? Good dinner, wasn't it, Stilton? Excellent. Now, if we can find the owner's office. If they could find the owner's office, they made a beeline for it. And that told me something else. The owner, Pete Monaster, had been away when I was hired. Now he was back in town. And he probably knew more about Rocky, more about the jewels than he'd ever admitted to the police. I wish I'd planted a bug in Monaster's office. I'd like to have heard what went on in there. But I hadn't, so I couldn't. Instead, I cleared off the table, and since my hitch for the night was over, I went back into the locker room and changed into my street clothes. As I was about to leave... Don't bother, buddy. Duh. 
Your name's Willie, ain't it? Uh, just a Willie Pagano. My name's Pete Montesco. I own this joint. I've been away a couple of weeks. Oh, how are you, sir, Mr. Montesco? Here's your pay and a few bucks severance. Did you beat up fire? That's right. I done something wrong, Mr. No, it's just that we got enough way that's without you. Shouldn't have hired anybody while I was gone anyway. Just go on out by the back way. Well, sure, sir, but if I thought I'd done something no, wrong, no I could... No, I just don't need you. That door will tie you over until you get another job. Hey, Willie, what the I didn't. Not at the moment. Not until I left by the back door and started out through the long, dark alley. Just a minute. Huh? You're the yeah. waiter we had tonight, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. You made a real good waiter. Real good, see? So? So I got something for you, Dollar. Here. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. All right, now, Dollar. You think I'm going to leave you alive? Oh, Bossy, put that thing away. The noise will bring the cops. It's all right, Barney. I'm just going to use the butt of it like this. <laughs> I vaguely remember something crashing out of my head. And if you think people don't see stars, you're wrong. Half conscious, I braced myself for another blow, but it never came. Instead of crazy mixture of sounds, noises, a lot of footsteps, a barrage of gunfire, sirens, a lot of cars breaking to a stop, when it was all like in a dream. I came to the next morning and found myself in a hospital bed, a doctor leaning over me with a hypo in his hand. Then, sometime later... Well, looks like the doctor was right, doesn't it? Uh, Randy. Yeah, a slug or something to make you sleep for a while really worked. Uh, you're going to be okay, except maybe for a big head. Randy Singer. Lieutenant Singer to you, buster. Son of a gun, Johnny. When are you going to learn to let me know when you're working around this town, huh? Was it you came along? That's right, like the U.S. Marine. Well, how did you... How did you know they were going to waylay me there in that alley? I didn't. I hadn't the least idea. I didn't even know it was you they were jumping. You and that crazy get-up, that black hair and the mustache and those thick glasses. Then I... I don't understand, Randy. Johnny, I've had a bunch of the boys on Rocky Harrison for over a week. You have? Sure, ever since that stooly whiskey soda told me about him being in town. It was you told me where to look for him. I? When? Seven years ago. The first time you found him in the purple hat. So we've been tailing him for days. Well, if I'd have known that... You think you're the only one that thought he might sometime lead us to those jewels? You found him, Randy? No, and now, thanks to you, it looks like we may as well give up. What do you mean, thanks and to me? Night, you just stay in bed. When the boys saw what was happening there in the alley, they moved in. Yeah? When Rocky and Barney started throwing lead, well, the boys kind of thought they'd better answer back. So Rocky and Barney are dead. So now, how are we going to find out where those diamonds are stashed away, huh? Do you know where Rocky was living? Sure, we've been all through his place, and Barney Little's place. Nothing. And since we don't know of anybody else who might have been in with him... Oh, you, uh, you don't, huh? What do you mean, Johnny? Well, Randy, I've suddenly got a crazy idea that maybe I can bluff my way into finding those jewels... You what? Come on, help me get into my clothes. Johnny Dollar, Pete, as if you didn't know. Now, just a minute. Dollar, did you say? That's right. Well, there's something a little familiar about you. Oh, come off it, Pete. Now, wait a Oh, that stupid waiter I fired last night. Rocky Harrison told you who I was. If you're wondering how I know that, just look at that bug fastened to the underside of your desk. A bug? A microphone? Why, I don't believe it. Hold it, Pete. You try opening one of those drawers, reaching for a gun, I pull this thing. 
I also heard them tell you when to let me go out into that dark alley. Oh, look, how was I to know what they wanted you out there for? I also heard enough to know where the only jewels are. Open up that safe, Pete. Oh, yeah? Open it. You're crazy. Now, oh, listen, Dollar, put down that gun Open for a minute. Open it up. Now, oh, look, maybe we can make a deal. Seven eh? years of hunting for him, Pete. So it's become an obsession with me. Maybe it has made me a little crazy. Oh, listen, yeah, I was you were crazy I... enough to put on that phony disguise to get into this place to find Rocky Harris. Listen, Dolly, all you right, all right. So I'm crazy enough to blast you down and blow that safe if I have to. You understand that? And there's nothing you or anything else is going to keep me from getting those jewels. First, you go. No. Yes. You. You mean it? Oh yeah, Pete. I mean it. Well, okay, Dollar. I'll get you the rocks. The fee on this one for recovery of the diamonds? Well, maybe the department frowns on such things, but half of the check goes to Lieutenant Randy Singer, NYPD. Good man, good friend. Expense account total, including the ride back to Hartford... Well, it just about balances with what I made on my job as a waiter. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. 